Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing how we can implement service-based application into uh, our web API. So in essence, we're gonna be creating an image processing service which, we, which we're gonna be connected to our web API. This image processing service is gonna be an Azure function, and the way it's gonna be communicating with our web API is through a, a Azure service bus. We're gonna be utilizing Azure uh, storage in order for us to store all of the images there. So. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It will really help that channel. Now, if you have any questions as well, please put them in the comments down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Today, we're gonna to be creating an image processing system. So let's see what's on the agenda for today. So first of all, we're gonna be discussing what are we gonna be building today. Then we're gonna be go through the technology that we're gonna be using in order for us to accomplish our goal. Then we're gonna go through the ingredients that we're gonna be needing, the different tools, so on and so forth. And lastly, we're gonna be jumping directly into the coding. So first things first, what are we gonna be building today? As we can see here, we're gonna be, build, we're gonna be able to build this process. So the goal behind this is we're gonna be creating some kind of uh, serverless function. We're basically gonna be responsible for actually taking the images that we're going to be uploading and processing it and resizing it and saving it to the blob. So it's going to be upload, uh, process, resize, and then saving it to the blob and make it available as we want. So what are we, what's going to happen? So first, as we can see here, the image is going to be uploaded. We're going to be storing it into a uh, blob storage, and then we're going to be send a message on the queue. Once that uh, message is sent to the queue, an Azure function will be able to pick up that uh, message once that Azure function has picked up that message it's going to check if that message is uh, actually valid if it is valid it's going to process it if not it's going to stop the processing and then if in case the message is valid what's going to be happening it's going to go to the blob it's going to download the image it's going to do all of the resizing because in that message we're going to be specifying the width and the height of the image that we want to resize to once the image resizing is finished we're going to be basically uploading it back to the blob and we're gonna be actually confirming that the process has been completed. So that's basically the goal for today's video. And once that's done, uh, we're gonna have basically two images. The first one, which is gonna be the original one and the resized one. So what technology are we gonna be using today? We're basically gonna be creating a web API and that way web API is gonna be responsible for us to upload the image. Secondly, we're gonna be building an Azure function. An Azure function is gonna be responsible for handling all of the image resizing. We're gonna be utilizing queues in order for us to send messages and be able to process all of the image processing requests. And lastly, we're gonna be utilizing Azure storage, specifically the blobs, where we'll be able to store those images on the cloud. So what are the ingredients? Basically, we're going to be needing three things. The first thing is going to be Visual Studio Code, which is going to be our code editor. Second, we're going to be utilizing the .NET SDK. We're going to be utilizing .NET 6. As well, we're going to be utilizing a free uh, Azure account in order for us to accomplish all of this. And basically, you can find the links on the description, uh, in the description down below or on the screen here. Now, let's jump into it. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating our web API project and then we're going to be installing some packages. So let's get started. So inside our terminal, we're going to be creating a new web API and we're going to be utilizing the .NET new. But before we do that, let's check the version of our .NET SDK. So let's type .NET dash dash version. And we need to see here the latest version, which is 6.0.200, which is the latest version of the .NET SDK by the time of this recording. Now we need to create our, our web application, our web API. So it's gonna be .NET new web API. And we're gonna give it the name uh, image processing.api. Perfect. Uh, forgot the N, so let's give it the N here. And perfect. Now we have seen the uh, creation has been completed and we can see here that we have a folder which contain basically uh, our controllers, uh, everything that we need. And if we look here, we can see that it's utilizing that not six. Perfect. So once we have done that, the next step for us is we need to install some NuGet packages. So let's navigate to our project. And first let us do a dot not build to make sure that everything is building as it should be. Perfect. 
and basically here we're going to be installing two actually NuGet packages. The first NuGet package is we're going to allow us to uh, communicate with the blobs in order for us to be able to upload our images and the second NuGet package that we're going to be installing is related to the queues so we're actually able to utilize the queues and send messages to the queue. So these are the two main NuGet packages that we're going to be installing today. So the first one is going to be .NET new package and it's going to be azure dot storage storage dot blobs so that's the first one dot not new oh sorry not new dot not add package apologies so that's the first one Perfect, you can see it's already populated for us inside our CS Pro. The second one, it's gonna be dot .NET add package azure.storage.queues. And this is all, this, uh, should take a few seconds to be completed. Perfect, now let's uh, build that image, uh, build, sorry, build that uh, uh, application so we can make sure that everything is running as it should so dot not build okay great perfect so now that our application is building as it should be uh, the next step for us is we're going to be creating two services the first service is going to be responsible for uploading the files to azure and the other one is going to be responsible for actually sending messages to the queues so why do we need to use that the first one uh, uploading uh, images to Azure in order for us to be able to allow the Azure function to find those images and to resize them. And the second one is why do we need uh, the queues in order for us to actually send messages to the Azure function in order for us to inform it that there's an image that it needs to be resized. Let us bear in mind here that the uh, queues is one way for actually to communicate with the Azure function. There is different ways. We can, for example, do an uh, a HTTP request to the Azure function so on and so forth but I think here the main purpose of this is to see how we can actually utilize different cloud services in order for us to create this uh, uh, functionality that we are aiming for here today so first things first uh, inside our root directory uh, we're going to be creating a new folder and we're going to be calling it services and inside the services folder we're going to be creating a new folder as well and we're going to call it interfaces perfect and inside our interfaces folder we're going to be creating a new class oh, sorry a new interface and this interface we're going to call it i blobs management and basically first of all let us make it dot not six so just a bit of aesthetics although it doesn't affect the functionality perfect and we're going to be basically here adding a single function which is going to be responsible for uploading our image to the cloud so it's going to be basically task uh, we're going to make it return a string basically the url for uh, for this uh, on the azure and basically we're going to call it uh, upload image or upload file let's make it more generic and basically what it's going to take it's going to take the container name basically where in the where in the azure storage we're going to be actually uploading this file and we're going to give it the file name and we're going to pass the file for it as byte array okay i think that should be enough so basically it's going to take the container name it's going to take the file name and it's going to take the actual file in a format of a byte array perfect so inside the services uh, folder we're going to be basically creating a new class and we're going to call it blobs management and also let's make it .NET 6 again only for the aesthetics And here we're gonna just inherit that interface. We're gonna say i blobs management. And let us fix those references. Uh, okay, let's add it manually. It's gonna be using uh, image processing dot API 
dot services dot interfaces okay perfect now we can see that this is still not happy why is it still not happy because we can we need to actually implement the uh, function that we have here we need to still implement this method inside our class so let us do this right now so an easy way to do is if uh, Visual Studio Code does not give you the autocomplete option because right now for some reason it's not allowing me to utilize the autocomplete uh, let us do this like this so it's gonna be first of all public task upload and then we need to create this method okay so now we can see here it's a public task and basically what we need to do here is we need to add the logic for us to upload the file to the to the cloud so so something that we missed here is first thing is we need to make this an async function and then uh, just come to think about it is we need to make this upload file dynamic so we need to pass the connection string to where it's going to be uploading dynamically so a good thing for us is to add this here string and we can put connection string and let's update our interface as well so let's copy this and we'll put it here no need for the double commas and that should be fine okay perfect so let's start by actually utilizing some of the uh, functionality to upload to Azure so the first thing things is we need to actually create a container so what do we need here what do we mean here by container so a container is uh, within Azure storage uh, within a blob is basically uh, we can actually create different sections inside those blobs and these sections sorry inside those storage and these uh, sections uh, we can utilize in order for us to for example to uh, categorize our file uploads we can utilize them for for, for example we can utilize public uh, a public container actually we can utilize a container to make it publicly available or we can actually utilize a container to make it for example contain some private information we can actually add some kind of an extra security layer on top of that uh, for example we can add a container in order for us to uh, one for images one for videos one for files so there's a lot of stuff that we can actually do with a container inside our azure storage but in general it's basically a way for us to organize our files and basically it's a way for us to actually um, categorize the different types of file that we currently have as well we can think about it simply as folders on the cloud that we can actually utilize so in order for us to start a con create a container the first thing first is we need to actually check if that container exists or not so we need to actually create some kind of a reference then we need to connect to us or check if that container exists or not if it doesn't exist we need to create it if it does exist we don't really need to do anything and then based on that we can actually proceed so First of all, we can we need to say that create a container reference, and then basically we're gonna put var container equal new blob container client, and we're gonna pass the connection string and the container name. Okay, perfect. Let's see if we can fix these references. I'm not sure why Visual Studio Code today does not want to actually give us the uh, autocomplete. Let's see. Uh, so uh, I haven't been able to make it work. I tried to restart things several times. Nothing is working. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna add those references manually. So it's gonna be using Uh, azure dot uh, core dot storage dot blobs that should i think do the trick okay perfect so now we can see it's happy uh, i'm not sure why visual studio is acting like this i tried several things uh, anyways so once we have created the container the next step is for us to actually check if this container exists or not and as we said before if it doesn't exist we need to create it so we're gonna utilize the container uh, let's make it await because it's an async function and we're gonna say dot create if it doesn't not exist async 
So what this is going to be doing is basically it's going to only create the container if it doesn't exist. If it does exist, it's not going to do anything. So once that's done, basically right now we need to set the access policy because Azure uh, by default it is secure. So we need to basically tell Azure right now that the files that we're going to be uploading, they're going to be available for the public without actually having any access token for those files. So let's say we upload an image and that image is going to be available for us directly to, the, to access without actually having to generate a token to access it. Because basically on the other hand, if we're going to make it secure, every time we need to access a file, we need to generate some kind of a token and that token is called the SAS token. And basically it's going to give us the ability to access that file on Azure. Uh, for a certain amount of time we can set for example the validity of that token for like 1 minute 20 minutes 30 minutes depending on what we actually need because right now we don't want to go into that level of uh, uh, access and uh, that level of security we're gonna just make it available publicly available so whenever we actually uh, click on a link it's gonna directly show without actually providing a security token for this so we're gonna utilize the uh, access policy so we're gonna put await container dot set access policy async and we're just gonna put public uh, public access policy type dot blob perfect uh, let's take this at least here it gave it to us something is not right with this visual studio <laughs> so using okay and we can remove the dot from here okay perfect so now that we have created a container, we checked if it exists or not, and then we set the access policy. Now it's time for us to upload this image to this container. So how do we do that? It's going to be very easy. So first thing first is we're going to put var blob equal container dot get blob client, and we're going to pass the file name. So basically what we're going to be doing here, if we take a look at the blob file here, we can see that it's actually creating a blob client. So what this is a blob client is basically like, a, uh, we can think about it as a, a reference. So basically what we're telling Azure that you need to create some kind of a reference for this new file that we're gonna be uploading to you right now. And basically that reference based on the file name that you're gonna, that we're utilizing, it's gonna be actually uh, so stored on Azure in order for us to actually send the file to it. So just at a reference right now. So once we do that, uh, what that let's continue and we're gonna basically create a stream so we'll put a stream because what we need to do is we need to convert the uh, array of bytes uh, which is gonna be the actual file into a stream because that's what the, the Azure is gonna take so it's gonna put let's call it str and it's gonna put a new memory stream memory if i can type memory stream and we're just going to pass to with the file which is array of byte it's going to convert an array of byte to a stream and once we do that we can directly now just upload the file so we're going to put await blob dot upload async and we're just going to pass the blob that we have actually the str that we have the stream that we currently have and once that all done all we need to do is just return that reference so we're going to put return and we're gonna put blob dot uh, I think it's gonna be URI dot full path dot uh, we can see here absolute URI okay perfect so right now what we have here is basically we have a, a blob method which is gonna be basically responsible for actually taking a, a file and then basically uh, uploading directly to Azure so once that is done let us save this uh, the next one we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating another interface and right now it's going to be for the queues so and so we are able to send a message to the queue okay so inside our interfaces folder we're going to create a new interface and this interface we're going to be calling it uh, let's say azure or we can just call it um, queues management simple as that iqs management iqs management Perfect. Again, let's do this for the aesthetics. So remove this, remove this. Let's add a semicolon. Let's fix this. Okay. And basically what we're going to be doing is uh, basically a method. Where, and based on that, we're going to be able to send messages to the queues. 
and let's think about it to make it generic as possible instead of actually hard coding it and uh, so instead of actually having let's say we, ha we are in an application and we have for example different services so we can have for example one to resize an image we can have another uh, azure function for example to send emails we can have another one for example to do some kind of a background task we don't want to basically to create different functionalities in order for us to uh, communicate uh, with the queues. For example, let's say we have three queues. We don't want to have three different uh, methods or different functions, one of them dedicated for each queue. A good way for us to do that, to think about it, is to actually have some kind of a generic function that we can actually utilize that generic function so we can send the information to. And basically, based on the information or initialization of that uh, function, it will be able to know directly to which queue it will communicate. So that's going to be the goal for this right now we're going to create it as generic as we can right now for this video so we can actually maybe you can try to utilize it later on so it's going to be first of all public uh, let's say task um, what we can do say yeah let's make a task boolean that's going to return if it's a success or not are we going to say it send message and uh, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to put it dash t and dash t here is going to be allowing us to make it more generic and basically we're going to put t as service message and then we're going to put the queue name that we want to uh, send to and then we're going to put the connection string i think that's fair so what does the T stand for here? And T basically here for the generic type. So the service message is the actual message that we're going to be sending to the queue. So instead of actually hard coding that message, for example, let's say here for the image size. So let's say we create some kind of DTO to have all of the information for the image size. We don't really want to hard code this here. So for example, if we initialize this message with the image size that we're going to be actually creating, it will automatically know for that. If it's, for example, for sending emails, we can just replace the T with sending emails. So this is more generic right now. So now that we have our interface ready, let us save this and inside our services, let's create a new class and we're going to call the queues management. And basically again, let's fix this. Save. And the first thing first is we need to inherit the IQ management. Again, Visual Studio Code does not want to help with this, so we're gonna we have to do it manually using image processing dot APIs dot services dot interfaces. Perfect. And now let's take this method. Will it help us at least by generating it? No, I don't want this to help today. Okay. Uh, oh, something popped up no wishful thinking okay so let's take this and first things first is we need to make this an async okay and basically what we're going to be doing right now is we need to actually implement the sending of the uh, of the message to the queue so first of all is we're going to be creating a queue client so create a queue client so we're going to put var queue client equal new queue client and we're just going to pass the connection string and the queue name similarly to the blob and we need to actually add all of these references manually because Visual Studio refused to help us today azure.storage.queues so once we have done that let's, uh, let's call the queue not the queue name Okay, once we have done that, the next step is we need to actually serialize the uh, body of the message. So here we can have it because it's a generic one. Uh, we need to serialize it before we can actually send it. So basically we're taking it from any types of object to a string that we can actually send. So we're going to put var message body equal JSON serializer serializer dot serialize and we're gonna uh, pass the service message 
and again we need to pass all of the references so we're gonna be adding here the using dot I think system dot text dot JSON I hope this will help okay perfect so now that we have done that the next thing is to actually send this message because right now we created a client we specified which queue that we want to send once we did that we have serialized the object of the message so it will actually uh, convert it to a string and then what we need to take is to take the string and send it to the queue so it's going to be very easy it's going to be await queue client dot send message async and we're going to pass the message body that's it and we're going to return true that it completed this is not the right way to do it uh, uh, there is uh, we need to the proper way of creating this is to create more of like a try catch making better uh, error handling is way better than this uh, for the sake of this demo we're just taking shortcuts so with this video will not be uh, three four hours long but uh, in a real world scenario, you need to add, uh, you need to have much more better error handling, uh, better serialization. Uh, but for now, this should, uh, this will do. So once we have done that, the next step for us is because right now we have two services. We have the one who's going to be able to communicate with Azure uh, for the blobs and another one for the queues. Right now, although we have them inside our code, our web API doesn't know anything about them, nothing at all, because we have not injected them into our uh, dependency injection. So right now, our API, we can that we can say it in a way that it's completely oblivious of what's going on with its own uh, services. So in order for us to fix that, we need to update our program.cs in order for us to inject those services into our dependency injection. And so basically we can actually utilize them in some, inside our controllers. So let's open our program.cs. And if you're coming from .NET 5 or anything previous to this, so before, before .NET 6, we used to add them in the startup class. But within, uh, uh, since the NAS6 came through, we don't actually utilize the startup class at all. We can have everything that we need inside our program.cs. So before we can actually build the service, what we're going to be doing is we're going to put builder uh, dot uh, services dot add. Uh, let's make it uh, scoped. So if you don't really know about dependency injection, I have a different video here, which I'm going to be linking here somewhere where we can actually go through the different types of dependency injection and when uh, we should use each. So right now we're just going to be utilizing add scoped and we're going to utilize the first one, which is going to be the IQ uh, management and queues management. Management. Okay. Again, Visual Studio refuses to help, so we need to add these manually. And as you can see here, uh, Visual Studio uh, would did not add anything, so let's add them. So we're going to put using uh, image processing dot API dot services dot interfaces, and then we're going to put using. Using image processing .api .services. Perfect. So now that we have added the queues management, we're gonna put builder .services that again add scoped, and we're gonna utilize the image processing service, which is gonna be i blobs management, and we're gonna put here blobs management. Great. So now that we have done all of that, it's a good idea for us to actually build the application to make sure that everything is building as it should be. So we're going to put .NET build. Perfect, build succeeded, which is a good thing. So now that we have done that, the next step for us is to actually maybe start adding some of the configuration for the app settings before we can actually create our uh, controller. So inside our app settings here, so now let us add two configurations and these configurations basically one is going to be corresponding to the queues another one for the storage account so it's just going to be basically the connection string that we're going to be utilizing 
Uh, again, this is a demo application. Uh, these types of uh, connection settings should never be uh, embedded inside your code or specifically app settings. This needs to be, for example, inside a user secret inside your machine or if you're utilizing Azure, you can, for example, you put them in a key vault and refer back to it. This is only for demo. This is not the right way that you need to do it in any production environment. This is only for demo purposes. I just like to emphasize on that. This is for demo purposes that we actually are putting this connection string inside our app settings. So let's do this right now. And here we can put, for example, the first one for service bus. And we're just, uh, we're gonna create a reference for it and we can say uh, bus service, or we can say queues, queues connection, anything we want. We're gonna create these uh, from Azure, but for now, we're just it's a good idea for us to create these configurations before we can fill them in. And the other one is gonna be, um, I think we're gonna, for one for service bus, another one for blob, not to vlog, blob. Uh, or we can put storage config. Yeah, storage config better. And basically we're gonna set, put here blob connection. Okay, sounds good. And I think that should be fine. Let's save this and let us build this. Okay, perfect. So now uh, let's think about it. And then let's think about what else we can we need to add before we can actually start building our controller. Uh, one thing is, uh, tell you what, let us start building our controller and we can add stuff uh, to it uh, as we go. So let's delete this, we don't really need it here. Let's do some cleanup. Let's delete this. We don't really need it as well. The weather forecast. Delete. Okay, perfect. So inside our controllers folder, let's create a new class. And we're gonna call this images. Images. Controller. Uh, that should be fine. And basically, again, let's fix this. Let's fix that semicolon and let's fix these and let's inherit from controller base okay oh come on visual studio you need to help me as well i think it is uh, using system.aspnet uh i forgot about it is it Let's see what else do we have here. Microsoft.aspnotcore.mvc. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That's what we need. So right now uh, we can start actually by creating a constructor. And basically here we need to inject the two services that we have. So we're gonna put the private and we're gonna make it read only. Yeah, that should be fine. And we're gonna put these two services here, which is gonna be the I blobs management. I'm gonna call it blobs management. Again, Visual Studio will refuse to help. So we're gonna put using uh, image processing dot API dot services.interfaces and let's get another one it's gonna be private read only i queues management i'm gonna put here queues management and then here we need to actually initialize them inside our constructor so we're gonna put i blob management blob management I'm gonna put blobs uh, management another one is gonna be for the queues so it's gonna be I queues management queues management sweet and now what we can do is just initialize them so blob management equal blob management and queues management equal queues management 
Okay, perfect, perfect. Save. Now it's time for us to create the actions. So another thing that we need to add here is the configuration. So we are able to tap into our app settings in order for us to get the information that we need. So it's going to be private again. Read only. All right, I configuration. I'm going to call it configuration. Again, we need to update our constructor. Our configuration. Configuration. Equal configuration. Okay, perfect. Now it's time for us to create our action. So uh, let's make it HTTP post. And basically, let's give it a root. Just call it image uh, image upload. Okay, let's copy this. And then basically, let's put this validate empty foreign key. Mm, no, we don't need it right now. It's only a demo application. Let's put it public, async, task. I action result. Okay, and it's gonna take an IM form file. We're gonna call this. Let's make it nullable and make it image. So well, let's do some checking. So if IMG equal equal null, we're gonna return bad request, which is fair. Else, what we're going to be doing is uh, we need to actually upload this image. And how do we upload this image? Let us create um, another method, another function, which is going to be responsible for that. Uh, what we can do here is we can paint it as a non action. So uh, we make it public or private because we don't really worry about this async. And we'll make this return string, which is going to be the URL, for example, for now. So let's make it task string. And we're going to call it upload file. And let us make this method. Uh, so it's going to take the iform file. I'm going to call it image. And it's going to take the size so we can put int width and int height. Right. And I think this is it. So first we need to check if the file is so if it's the file is not null basically or it's not corrupted by the upload. So we need to do some checkings there. So we can put if file is not I think length equal from zero. We just return. So it's image, not file. If image is not of length bigger than zero, yeah, length is bigger than zero. We just return empty string. Do we need to return a string? We don't do it. Uh, let's do it without for now. If we need to, we can just come back to it later. So we'll just return it. We end the function there. Okay. So once it actually pass uh, this condition, which basically means that the file is actually not corrupted and it, it actually contains something. Uh, once we actually have this, we can actually tap in right now to the blob uh, service. So first put var connection let's get the connection string and we'll put configuration and i think let's go back to the app settings for the storage it's going to be storage config and it's going to be blob connection we're going to create these right now so we can fill them up okay so once we have done that the next step is to actually uh, have a memory stream And basically the memory stream here 
it's gonna allow us to actually get uh, convert the iform file into a memory stream and then from that we can actually create a byte array so it's gonna be a nullable and we're gonna make it a stream equal to null and then we're gonna be basically right now initializing it into a byte array from that so here what we can do is we can put a weight using actually it's gonna be something like this using stream equal new mem memory stream and then basically we're gonna make it await file.copy async not file sorry it's gonna be image dot copy async and put the stream here and once that is done I think the put for bytes which is gonna be the array of bytes that we're gonna be use it we're gonna put stream dot to array I think that should be enough so if you if you if you're not sure about this uh, what's memory stream so basically we're taking the file that we are uploading it uh, we're create we're creating an empty uh, say a null array uh, memory stream which is going to be basically composed of an array of bytes we can think about it that way and once that's done what we're doing is basically we're opening that stream which is empty right now and we're telling it actually whatever it's inside that uh, iform file that we have you need to copy all of its content from that iform file to this new stream that we have and once that all of it's done what you need to do is you need to actually generate an array of those bytes that we currently have as simple as that I know it might look a bit uh, confusing here, but it's basically very simple. We're just taking the content from one object, putting it in another, so we can actually utilize it way better. So once we have done all of that, the next step here is we can put var file bytes, file bytes equal await file dot get bytes. Uh, it's image dot get bytes. So what we have we could have done is we could have done something which is a bit more smarter than this is not smarter but different way. We can put this as a byte array nullable of course we can make it equal to null and then this we can initialize it before the stream and we can just take this one here and align it here so that way we have the file bytes and we can actually utilize it instead of redoing the work again and you can see here that it's already filled so what the next step for us is we can actually just check if file bytes not equal to null Uh, now we can do the work uh, here we can just return if it's equal to null or yeah let's make it like this so if it is equal to null we'll just return it means it failed else uh, we continue our work and basically we need to get the file name so var name equal uh, path dot get file name or let's make it this way get random file name and what we can do is let's attach like a date for it so we can know exactly what is uh, when is it created so we can put plus equal and we can put an underscore let's make this like this and we can put date time dot now UTC now let's make it on the UTC time and then put to string and let's just give it uh, that format which is gonna be day day month month year year and then basically we're gonna replace the forward slash with an underscore I think that's a good uh, approach so once we have that file name ready for us now we can actually utilize that uh, blob service so <coughs> and the blob service is going to return for us a URL 
yeah so put var url although we're not gonna use it right now but we're gonna use it to communicate with the queues so we're gonna put a blob management of course gonna be await and the blob management we have upload file and it's gonna take basically first a container name and we're gonna call it images and the file name we just created it so it's gonna be name and the file which is gonna be the file bytes and lastly the connection string uh, we have connection I think this this should be it okay uh, so now let's continue the request here so this one here is gonna be upload file and we're gonna pass the image and we're gonna make it async and once that is done why it's not happy oh we need to pass all of the different information sorry uh, we need to pass let's, let's say we wanna make them all 300 by 300 for example uh, although this will not do anything right now, we'll just accept uploading the file. Uh, we're just gonna return an okay for now. Okay. So one thing that I forgot to add here, which is basically gonna be the attributes for this uh, controller in order for us to know, uh, to make it actually uh, an API controller. So we're gonna put here API controller, and then basically another one is gonna be the route for it. And we're gonna make it controller, as simple as that. So now uh, let us go to our web browser and let us go to Azure and let's create a new resource group and we'll add everything that we want there. So let's create a new one and we'll, we'll call this uh, resource group uh, image processing. RG. Okay, gonna change the location. Review and create. Okay, create. So now that we have created our resource group, uh, the next one is we're gonna be creating storage. So let's go here. Where is storage? Storage, storage. Storage. And basically, we're gonna be creating. storage account and we're gonna put create we already have our resource group created we're gonna call this uh, storage account name uh, demo underscore uh, image storage what oh, does not take underscore I forgot let's put dash Okay, let's put image, storage, one, two, three. We'll put it uh, similar to our resource group, which is gonna be UK South, standard, more than enough. Uh, okay, J redundancy, local redundancy. Next. Let's keep everything here as is. We don't really need to change anything. Public endpoint. Let's keep this. Enable soft delete. Enable soft delete. Okay. That should be fine. Okay, let's enable versioning. That's a good idea. We don't want any of this right now. Keep it by default. And let's create this. So let's create this. This should take a few seconds actually a few minutes once that is done we're gonna jump back here and we're gonna be continuing uh, configuring our storage a few moments later okay perfect now that our uh, resources are creating successfully let's go to resources and inside our containers we're gonna create a new container let's see what did we call it we called it here images okay let's copy this and let's go back to our web browser and we'll call it images and we're gonna make it blob yeah ok 
Okay, that should be fine. We don't really need any of those. Create. So now we have our blob container ready for us. Okay. So once we have done all of that, the next step is let us come here and let us take the connection string. And inside of here, we're going to put show keys. And we're just going to copy the full connection string. And we're going to go to our app resource group. And inside the storage configuration, we're going to paste it here. Perfect. So right now, let's try to run this. First of all, let's, let's build it. Perfect. So say dot not run. Okay, it's running and we can see it's running here on port 7262. So let's open this. We'll go to Insomnia. Let's go here and let's create a new request collection and we're gonna call it image processing. Create and we're going to create a new request. It's going to be post an image and it's going to be of type post. And the body, it's going to be a binary file because we're going to be uploading it. Create and then here we're going to put this and let us see what this is going to be the image controllers. Let's go back up, 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 up. And we can see it's going to be directly the controller's name, so images. And we can see here that the route for this is image upload. Let's take this. And let us choose a file. So basically, uh, let us run this application again. And let's go back to Insomnia. The main issue was here, we were trying to force it uh, for some reason it doesn't like it so whenever we click right now if we just go back to file this is the file that we selected before if I click on send it should go in but right now we're getting a different error which is related to this one right here uh, which is a bad request so let's try it again for example five yes nope I don't want to set anything send okay but if we let's try to open it through Squ Swagger. Let's go here, let's paste it, and we're gonna put swagger.index.html. Okay, perfect. So right now let's do this one here. Let's try it out. Let's choose a file and desktop. We'll go to thumbs and we'll choose any of my thumbnail and let us execute this. So basically what we got here is we got a 200. It means that it works successfully. So right now here, if we go back to our Azure portal and if we go to containers, if we go to images, we should see that image here. Perfect. And if we click on it, we can see that we have the image all uploaded. And if we want to see it, let's copy this one and let's open it here has been downloaded and basically once it has been downloaded we can open it okay we I think I discovered the bug we did not assign an extension to the image so let's fix this right now cancel and let us stop this so when we're generating the file names it's good to add an extension to it so let's do it like this so plus and we're just going to take the same uh, image extension that we currently have from the file. So we can put something like uh, image img.x 
extension do we have the extension or there is a way we can get the extension dot file name dot I can't remember it let me try to find it out so let's go back to our web browser so we can say get file extension C sharp always trust stack overflow and we can see here it's going to be this one okay so let us see here just add this so we can say file actually it's going to be more of a var file extension equal like this and we're just going to put here the img and we're just going to attach the file extension at the end yep file extension I think that should be fine it will not accept the IMG uh, I wonder why why does not it accept okay maybe there's a different way Okay, let's see this one. Nope, no one helped him yet. Okay, let's see this one here. As much as I hate this, but Google have a better, uh, although I don't like, I don't like using it, but let's face it, it has a better search, it's a better search engine. Okay, let's use this. So iPhone file, validation results. That's not what we want. Get file from iPhone file. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. I think I know the, how to solve it. Thank you. Can put here just dot file name and this will work okay perfect so let us just uh, build it again so dot not actually let's run dot not run let's go to our web browser let's go to swagger let's refresh it oh it's still building okay it's running so let's try it out let's take a file any file and let's execute and let's go back here images we see two files now and we can see that we have attached the extension okay perfect now the first part is basically uploading the image is done the second part is actually uh, sending the message and then the third part is actually creating another function which is going to be responsible for the um, resizing okay so let's stop this application right now before we can actually start implementing uh, the uh, queues service which basically we're going to be able to send a message to the queue what we're going to be doing right now is we need to send uh, basically we need to create some kind of a DTO which we're going to embedding all of the information that we want to send to the queue and that uh, DTO we're going to call it image resize DTO which is going to be containing all of the information so once that is done we can actually create that method which is going to be responsible for sending the queues uh, messages to the queues okay so inside our root directory let us create a new folder uh, we'll call this folder models and we'll just create a new class and we're going to call it image resize DTO okay let's fix those and let's fix this again and it's going to be very simple uh, we're going to put string it's going to be file name and another one is going to be the width that you want to change into so int width width and then we're going to specify the height and then we're going to specify the url 
and lastly uh, we need to specify the image container it's going to be a string okay i think that should be enough so once we have done that let's go back to our image controller uh, let's create another uh, method also it's going to be a non-action and it's going to be private async task and we're gonna say send message to the queue simple as that and it's gonna take the string which is gonna be the image location uh, it's gonna take another string which is gonna be the image name and it's gonna take also we need to take for example the width so let's add Uh, we need to add a comma, int width, and int height, height, tab. And lastly, I think what we need to do is we need to add the container that's going to be taking. Yeah, that should be fine. So once we have done all of that, as we did previously uh, with the image here, what we need to do is we need to get the connection string and make sure that it's uh, it's valid so before we can actually initialize it. So let's come back here. We're going to put var connection equal underscore configuration. And let's go here and check what is the configuration for this. So it's going to be service bus. And basically once that's done, we can come here and we can see the queue connection. Let's take that. And this is the connection. Now let us build our object, which is going to be the image resize DTO. I'm going to call it uh, IMG DTO equal new. <coughs> and of course, Visual Studio will not able to help us. So let us add those references manually. Let's go all the way up. And we're going to put using image processing dot api dot models hopefully this will make visual studio code happy it's very disappointing today so file name uh, we're gonna just get image name and then we're gonna add the height equal height width equal width and then we have the image container equal container and we have the URL, which is going to be the image location. I think that should be enough. Once that is done, it's going to be right now very easy because we have already initialized everything that we need to do regarding to the queue service. So it's going to be await queue management dot send message. And it's going to be of type image resize DTO because we don't forget we made it generic. So that, uh, that way we are able to tell that generic method which type of object it needs to consider. And once that is done, we need to pass that image DTO. And then we need to tell uh, uh, which queue uh, that we want to pass to it. So right now, I'm just going to call it, it's going to be the image queue. Very simple. And lastly, we're going to pass the connection string, which is going to be the CON. And that's it. And that basically right now uh, will allow us to uh, send a message to the queue and basically from there the other function which we did not create yet it will uh, basically be able to uh, pick it up so let us go to right now to other and create a queue from there and basically we are able to add this here so let's go to our uh, web browser and basically we're gonna go back here let's go to our resource group and create so basically what we're looking here is for a service bus so let's put service bus. Let's see what we're going to get. Service bus. Perfect. So we can see we have a nice service bus icon here. So let's create one. Already resource group is there. And we're going to call this, let's call it a demo image bus. Let's see if this will work. OK. The location, we're going to just make it uh, UK South. And we're going to take the very basic, basic. We don't really need more than that. 
you can see here that it can go to crazy amount like 668 dollars a month uh, or 10 we're gonna utilize the very basic one uh, networking public access that should be fine we don't need any tags and uh, let's create and again this will take a few uh, minutes once that's created we'll jump back in a few moments later so now that has been created let us go to resources and we can see here that right now we have a service bus which does not have contain anything in it which is completely fine what we need to do is we can see here that we have a queue button we need to click on it and there we need to create our queue and the queue that we're going to be creating let's see what did we name it here image queue so let's copy this one and that's the name that we're going to be doing we're going to utilize the bare minimum uh, enable that letter yes i have another video which i'm uh, which i go into deep uh, into what are what is service bus how we can utilize it why do we need to use it uh, if you want to learn more about service bus i'm going to be linking uh, linking it here somewhere but for now let's utilize this so let's put create and has been created and now we should see it here and if we click on it we can see that there is nothing in it zero messages nothing so let's come back here let us run this again oh before we do that let us uh, link this to the previous so send message to the queue so once we did all of that first of all we need to make it await we need to send the message to the queue and then we need to send the image location which is going to be the url and then the image name we need to make it name and then uh, the width will get width i think we passed it yes and then the height and the uh, container of the image i think uh, it was images perfect okay so let us run this again dot not run dot not run perfect it's building now let's go to our web browser and let's go to our swagger file let's refresh let's click on this let's click on try it out choose file let's choose any file uh, service bus very convenient so once we did that uh, we'll click on execute and we got an error why is it an error you can see the connection string is empty exactly so we created it but would not take the connection string so it's our bad so let's stop this here let's go back to our web browser and let's go back here and let's find the connection string so it's shared access policies we don't have that so let's go back a bit more and here we can see the shared access policy here let's click on this and let's copy the full connection string and let's go back to our app settings and let's paste it here save and now let's run this again and let's go back to our web browser okay it's running uh, let's come back here and let's click on execute again okay what's the issue right now we said valid combination of account no valid uh, combination of account found okay let's fix this one let's see what's the issue as you can see it's a different day we're gonna continue working on our problem and i think i have figured it out and we're gonna try to solve it right now so let's get back to it so the first things first the main issue that we were facing yesterday is whenever we were trying to send a message to the queue it was failing here due to some weird error message so uh, after doing some uh, reading about it uh, i discovered that we're using the wrong NuGet package so let's fix this right now so first things first uh, let us go to our uh, uh, cs proj and let us delete this uh, so basically we are utilizing this new get package which we shouldn't we should use the azure messaging service plus one apologies for this confusion so let's delete this and now let's add this new package so let's see where we are and let's go to the image process api and basically let's add the package so dot not add package azure dot messaging dot service bus 
let's add this. This should take a few seconds to be completed. And as we can see, it has been installed successfully. Okay, great. So the next step is uh, we need to come here to the queues management implementation and we need to update this code so it will work with the new um, package. So let's delete this. And let's delete this. We don't need it anymore. And let us delete this. Also, we don't need it. We don't only need to need these. Okay, so as you can see, I've already try, uh, added try catch and let's add our source code right now. So first things first is because this is going to be a different library, we need to actually have different initialization of the queues. So inside the create a queue client here next to it, we're going to start by creating first our container. So uh, no, so it's not going to be our container. It's going to be basically initialization of the queue so far using actually it's going to be you await using var client equal new service bus client and we're going to pass the connection string and let us fix those references again I'm, I'm not sure why this is not working so let's add this here so we're going to say using Azure dot messaging dot service bus. Hopefully this will work. Okay, perfect. So once we have created first the client uh, and we pass it the connection string, uh, the next step, it's going to be basically uh, creating the service bus sender. So we're going to put service bus sender and we're going to call it sender. And basically this is going to be the client who's going to be responsible for communicating with service bus and sending the message uh, to the queue. So sender equal client dot dot create sender and we're going to pass here the queue that we want to communicate with. And then once that's done, we can utilize this message body in order for us to send and once that's done, we can create and actually create a service bus message. And we're going to put service bus message equal, uh, we're going to call it msj equal new service bus message. And we're going to pass the message body as the body of this message. And once that is done, it's going to be as simple as await client dot send or basically a client no it's gonna be sender sender dot send message async and we're gonna pass the message to it and that's it so basically here what we did is uh, the first issue that we face is that we have used uh, the wrong NuGet packages which is uh, uh, something uh, I look over to apologies for that and second, what we did after we have utilized the correct NuGet packages, we have updated our code in order for it to work with this NuGet packages. So the connection string that we have already gotten from the uh, Azure portal was already correct. We didn't, do have, we didn't have to do any extra work from that side. Uh, the connection string is 100% working fine. All we need to do is just utilize the right uh, NuGet packages. So now let's try it out and see if that actually works. So first things first, we're going to run the application. We're going to put dot not run. Making sure, oh, we didn't save these changes. Save, oh, let's run it again. Okay, perfect. Let's go back to our web browser. And let's refresh this. Let's click here. Let's click on try it out. Let's choose a file. And let's send this. And what did we get? We got a 200. Now if we go to Azure portal and let's go back here, let's click on the image queue. And we can see here that we have two messages I have already sent one before uh, to make sure that the code works and we can see here that we have two messages in the queue waiting to be processed. 
Perfect. So we can see one is incoming and one has already been uh, processed, which is exactly what we wanted. So once that we have made sure that we are creating uh, or basically we are able to uh, send a message to the queue, the last uh, piece of the puzzle is for us to actually create the Azure function, which is going to be responsible for taking, uh, for responding to the queue, as well as resizing and then uploading to the block storage, which is going to be a very uh, a straightforward approach we're going to be utilizing a image library which is going to be called image sharp and that library is going to be responsible for doing all of the resizing required as well we're going to be utilizing azure function in order for it to basically live on the cloud and make it run uh, basically on demand whenever there's a message so it's not always running 24 7 and it's not running always when there is no basically need for it so that's one of the main benefits also of Azure Function. So basically, if you don't know what Azure Functions are, they are basically uh, a way for us to deploy our code to uh, Azure. And basically, Azure will take care all of, uh, about all of the infrastructure, all of the configuration, uh, all of the networking stuff. We don't have to worry about anything. All we need to do is make sure that our call compiles correctly. And basically, it, uh, and we are able to upload it to the internet. And that's it. So uh, that is one of the main benefits of Azure Function, easy deployment, fast deployment. and it's a very way to create something which is very cost efficient because basically we're only going to be charged when it's running that's basically it so now let's let's create our other function and from there let us try to basically create the functionality for resizing those images and once we create all of that let us upload them uh, to azure and we can see the full process of the images so let's do this right now to create an azure function we're going to be utilizing a visual studio extension that we have and uh, we'll take it from there so if you go here you can see that we have the azure icon uh, which is basically if you want to get it all you need to do is you need to go to this extension section and if you go down you can see here we have the uh, azure account and we have the azure function so you need to install this one you need to install this one as well and this basically will give you access to the uh, azure uh, extension here within uh, visual studio code so once we have created we have this what we need to do is we can see here that we have like a small icon with like a plus section on it so let's click on that and basically once click on that uh, it's asked us do you want to create an azure function here uh, we're going to say yes and basically it's going to ask us uh, what language do you want to create this azure function in uh, we're going to say it's going to be in C sharp. Then it's going to ask us which runtime. We're going to utilize .NET 6. And then basically it's going to ask us what type of Azure function. We're going to basically create one which is going to be based on the queue trigger. So Azure Service Bus queue trigger. We're going to choose this. And then it's going to ask us to create a function name. So that's going to be uh, a name that we want to give to our application, uh, to our sorry function. So we can call it uh, process image resize Hit enter and now we need to give it a name or a namespace so what we can do is we can basically uh, sample it here based on what we have so here we can see it's called image processing.api so what we can do is we can make it image processing dot function it's just like a, a way to keep everything consistent and basically it's going to ask us to uh, create a local settings app so we're going to say yes and we're gonna which subscription do we wanna utilize? I'm gonna utilize my pay as you go. And basically, uh, it automatically knew that uh, I already have a service bus because it's basically what happens here. This extension will connect with your Azure subscription, and once it connects with the Azure subscription, it will actually scan all of the available resources that exist. And because we have selected already that we're going to be utilizing an Azure service bus in order for us to communicate with this Azure function, it has automatically uh, pulled down from as that uh, a service bus that exists for us so it, that's why it's available here for us inside this drop down list so once uh, we have it here so let's choose this service bus and basically now we need to specify the queues so if you go back to our web browser and uh, we can see that the queue name is image queue so let's copy this one and let's paste it here and click on enter again and basically here it says that uh, in order for us to utilize it, we need to actually choose a storage account. So what we're going to be doing right now is let's select a storage account. And basically I can see that I already have a storage account available there. I'm going to choose that storage account. And basically once that is done, we can see 
if we close this we can see that my function has already started to being created for me something that which i don't really like about this extension is like to try to populate everything together so what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna create a new folder i'm gonna call it functions i'm gonna put everything here so this all the way to this inside this functions as well this vs code extensions okay perfect so now we have two folders one for our api and one for our other function so if we take a look at it here uh, what we can see is we have our image and we can see that it has the function name it has the queue that's going to be connecting to it has the connection string and if we take a look at our uh, host sorry our local settings we can see that our configuration is already there and how it's going to connect uh, what is azure storage that we're going to be utilizing and what is the service bus that we're going to be utilizing as well if we take a look here we can see that it's expecting a queue item and basically uh, what we what we can see here is just a simple log message so uh, the next step for us is we're going to be building this function and basically we're going to be adding all of the required uh, you get packages and then we're going to be require adding uh, basically the processing of the queue of the queues that's going to be coming for us so let's do this right now so the first thing that we're going to be doing right now is we need to install some NuGet packages into our application in order for us to be able to utilize the queues to the to, to be able to utilize blobs in order for us to serialize uh, the objects that's being sent through the queues so on and so forth so let's do this right now so the first one is we're going to be adding is gonna be a rest chart which is gonna be um, well, basically a tool that allow us to do some web calls so let's do this so dot not add package rest sharp perfect so the second one it's gonna be basically uh, image sharp which is gonna be a new get packages that's gonna allow us to actually resize the image based on the parameter that we are passing it's a very popular tool a very popular new get package and I highly recommend using it so it's gonna be dot not add package six labors dot image sharp and for this we're going to be specifying the version one point uh, let's double check it I just go back to our web browser and let's put the nuget package image sharp I think it's we're gonna not, we're not going to be utilizing the latest one we're going to be utilizing uh, version 1.3 Let's see package reference. Nope. Oh, uh, what is it? Dependencies versions. We're going to be utilizing this one 0 1.0.4. So version 1.0.4. Okay, perfect. And once that is done, uh, the next step for us is we need to install the blob uh, nuget package. So also dot not add package azure.blob sorry azure.storage dot blobs blobs okay and the last one is going to be newtonsoft.json so we can serialize the object so it's going to be dot not add package <coughs> newtonsoft newtonsoft.json Okay, perfect. Once these are four packages have been installed, we can go here to the code.cs approach and we are able here to see that our application uh, contain all of the NuGet package that we want. One, two, three. Okay, perfect. All of them are there. So once we have done all of that, uh, the next step for us is just to build the application and it's going to fail. So let's check it out right now. Dot not build. It's going to fail, I think succeeded uh, let's see oh yeah because I implemented the fix okay now it's gonna fail this is what you're gonna get 
Why did it fail? Because basically when we created the application, uh, the Azure function here needs to be static and it's not has been added to us automatically. So as, as soon we add static here and we save, and then we build the application, this error should go away. And right now, if you want to run this application, you need to be aware of that you need, we need to utilize the Azure uh, CLI tools. So basically the Azure function CLI tools will allow us to actually debug and run the Azure functions locally on our machine without the need for actually to deploy to Azure and try to actually execute it there. So in order for us to do that, there is a lot of uh, documentation online how we can install it. If you're using a Mac, I highly recommend utilizing Homebrew in order for you to install this Azure CLI. For Windows, there's also uh, some tools that you can utilize within PowerShell in order for you to have this Azure uh, function CLI available for you locally. So what we're gonna be doing right now, we're gonna go to the web browser, we're gonna check the Azure function CLI, uh, just go a quick overview so we can see how we can install it on your own machine. And once that is done, we're gonna continue Continue here and see how we can actually uh, upload an image, uh, check the queue that contained that image, and then we're going to run this Azure function and we can see how, that, how this Azure function is able to pull that message from the queue and be able to see the data con inside of it. So let's do this right now. So let's go to our web browser again and we're going to type here in the search, let's go to Google, and we're going to type Azure Functions CLI. And basically, once you click on here, if you go a bit down, so basically we have different versions of Azure function. So because I write, currently I am on Mac OS, I highly recommend utilizing this one with Homebrew. So you need to install first Homebrew and then you need to basically follow these steps. If you're utilizing Windows, you can download them. Or if you're utilizing Linux, you can actually download the package and install it from there. So since I'm on Mac OS, all you need to do is go to the terminal and uh, do this and you'll have the tools available for you. So once you have done all of that, let us go here, let's create a new terminal. And <coughs> let's see where we are. Let's go to the API and let's run it. And basically let's go now to our web browser and let us refresh this page. Let us try it out, choose a file. Let's choose any file, this one for example. And let us execute. And we can see it got a 200. So right now if we go back, if we're still in the web browser, if we come here, we can see, and let's refresh this one. We can see that we have a new message. We just popped up right now around, uh, let's see, let's go back here. And overview one message active which is the one they currently have and we can see it's currently exactly at my time at 7 17 a.m i think there's a bit of a delay here but basically it's currently uh, uh, it's gonna process the message that i just sent here and once this is done uh if you want i can check that my function is running so i can come back to my azure function i can type func start and basically func start will allow the Azure function to run locally and once I click on that we can see it's building the application and we can see the Azure function is now running and we can see here that I was able to pull down the image and we can see this is the image that I just uploaded and we can see from which container we can see the width that uh, of the uh, width and the height that I have specified as well as the different uh, names uh, that I have provided to it. So we can see right now that the full cycle is working. The last step of this cycle is currently to be able to resize that image and upload it to the blob storage again. So let's do this right now. So let's stop this. When you stop it, it's gonna take a few minutes, to, a few seconds to stop, uh, roughly, roughly around 30 seconds. So right now it's stopped. So once it's stopped, right now let us go back to our source code and let us update it with the latest changes that we wanna do. So first things first, once we have uh, added this, so this is a log message, we'll keep it. Uh, it's good to see basically the outcome uh, of the message that we're being receiving. So once that is done, basically what we need to do is we need to convert the message that we got from a string to an object. And for us to do that, what we're gonna be doing is, uh, this is not the right way. So currently uh, inside our uh, 
API, we have specified a resize inside our model specifically, we specified a image resize DTO. And this image resize DTO contain basically the class and all of the information that we need in order for us to be able to uh, uh, process this uh, request and to be able to send it to the queue. And because right now uh, the Azure function is kind of required to know what is this image resize DTO, uh, it's always good to, uh, to do is basically to have the image resize DTO uh, inside a common cl class library. So basically we create a common class library and basically we share it, we, we shared it with both the API as well as the Azure function. Uh, just for simplicity's sake this time, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to recreate the class inside the Azure function. But we, what we need to do is, uh, and we need to know, is basically if you're working on any type of production environment, you should not be do doing that. What you need to do is you need to create a common class library and then you need to link uh, this common class library into these two projects in order for you to have a single source of truth. Because basically, if you're gonna do the same role that I'm doing right now is basically creating two different classes. If you change it in one place, the other one is gonna be out of sync unless you change it manually. And this is gonna be creating a lot of headache on the long run, specifically if you're trying to maintain it, or if you try to hand it over to someone else and they think this is gonna be able to, uh, if they change it in one place, it's gonna automatically uh, work on a different place. It's just gonna be a complete headache. So for this reason, please do not uh, do this. This is only for demo purposes in uh, real life scenario you need to create a common class library, put your DTOs there, and then be able to share it with both projects. So let's continue right now. So inside here right now, uh, our function, uh, we're gonna be basically creating a new class. And I'm gonna call it image resize DTO. And it's gonna be the exactly same thing. So I'm just gonna copy exactly this one. And I'm just gonna kind of paste it here. Again, this is only for demo purposes. You should not be doing that in any production environment. Okay, so let's save this. And right now, once we have done that, we're gonna be utilizing right now uh, Newton Soft, which is uh, uh, the package that we have installed, which is this one here. Newton Soft the JSON, order for us to serialize it. So let's do this right now. So we're gonna say here var resize info equal json converter no json convert dot uh deserialize let's first let's fix this see if it will no okay so i think this is going to be using newton soft json it's not even recognizing that uh Okay, let's okay let's build it see if it's actually right or wrong nope not able to recognize it so let's do a dot not clean maybe this will help because sometimes it could be stuck okay uh, let's do another dot not build okay it's still building which is fine okay build succeeded okay great let's try it again at least here we're not getting an error on using soft Something is not right with my Visual Studio code, apologies for that. So we're gonna put var resize info equal JSON. Let's see if it's gonna, no. It's gonna be JSON convert dot, it's not gonna be it. So it's gonna be DC realize, DC, DC realize object. And we have to pass, which is gonna be the image resize DTO and we're gonna tell it to resize my queue item let's build this I really hope this uh, this works okay perfect so once we have done that the next step is after we resize the image we need to actually get the connection string and then basically continue from there so it's gonna be var storage connection string 
Let's put it as U on. That should be fine. Equal. Uh, we need to get it basically from the uh, local dot settings dot JSON. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we made sure that we have access to our storage account, which is this one. So we're going to be utilizing this. So let's come back here. And basically what we need to do is we need to put environment dot get environment variable. And then we need to pass the value of it. So once that's done, we need to actually right now connect to the storage account. So we're going to put here connect to the storage account. I'm going to put var storage account equal cloud storage account dot parse and we're going to pass the connection state storage account okay let's build again it's always good to build and make sure that there is anything i think this is gonna see if it's gonna error okay it did not recognize the cloud storage account so let's add using azure what was it called let's check it here this uh, intellisense issue with my visual studio code again apologies for that uh, uh let's use this one and let's build see if this will work nope uh azure storage let's clean uh, dot not clean dot not uh, build uh azure storage blobs let's see this one here okay i have an idea because this is gonna cause us a lot of headache uh, okay what i'm gonna do i'm gonna open this application in rider because it's way better than right now in visual studio code so let's do this so open project Let's go to Rider, File, Open, and let's open this. Okay, now let's make the font bigger. Let's see how we can do that. Options, Preferences. Editor, general, let's see here, font. Okay, so we're gonna change the font size from 13 to 32. And let's see if this will help. Nope, let's check again, preferences, font. Uh, it was 13, okay, let's see. Thirteen. Save. I'm not sure why it's not picking it up. Oh no, thirty-two. Save. Okay. Now at least it's working. I think this is good. Okay, let's continue from here. Because for some reason, my Visual Studio code is not actually able to pick it up. So let's fix those references. Simple as that. No need for all, all of the headache. <coughs> let's try to build this to make sure it's building. Dot not build. Perfect. Oh, I miss, I miss, I miss IntelliSense. It's so nice. Okay. So once we have done all of that, I think uh, the next step for us right now is okay. Once we have got the connection and we are able to parse it, let's con connect to the container. So it's going to be var container equal. Oh, we need to create a client first. Okay. So I put var 
my client equal storage account dot create cloud blob client okay so let's explain what's going on here so first of all we got the connection uh, from the configuration once we got the connection uh, basically we key, uh, we create we parsed it into uh, utilize the storage account to parse that connection for us to create a client and basically once that is done we we said that we're going to be connecting to a storage account we basically created a blob storage client because if we take a look here if we just remove this and create on the create again we can see that we have different types of a client we have one for tables one for uh, queues uh, one for files and one for uh, the actual blobs so just to be aware the storage queues is different than the message bus queues they are completely different uh, in, th in terms of implementation so on and so forth for the sake of this uh, video we're utilizing the uh, service bus queues we're not utilizing this one so that's why here we need to utilize the cloud blob client so let's continue after that once we have created the client we need to actually connect to a container so let's put here connect to a container and basically it's going to be var container equal my client yes my client dot uh, get container reference and then basically here what we need to pass is which container the image is located in so we have to go back to visual studio code unfortunately right now so if we look here we can see uh, if we go back to the controller and we can see here that the container that we are uh, utilizing is the images container so we need to utilize the same container so let's do this right now again in a real life uh, or a production environment it's images again in a real life scenario you should not actually hard code this here all of these needs to be dynamically injected to both of the api and the azure function either through some kind of configuration common class library uh, or even uh, utilizing azure uh, key vault where all of this information is stored so it will be shared with both of them you should not at all uh, hard coding them but this is again a demo so that's why we're doing it like this so once that is done and we have created the container uh, the next step for us is to actually create connect to the storage account so now once we have actually uh, connected to a container we need to check if the container exists or not so basically what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to put container dot cre uh, create if not exist async perfect so basically uh, we need to make sure that the container exists or not so that's that's why we need to use this one once we actually uh, create this one the next step for us it's gonna be await oh we already uh, let's make this an await sorry so it's complaining uh, because we can see here this is not an async method so let's convert this to an async method async and we need to make it a task okay see it automatically added everything so it's so nice okay so once we have basically com uh, connected to the container now it's, it's time to work for the blobs so it's going to be var blob name equal resize info dot file name so that's going to be the uh, the blob name that we're going to be working with and then we're going to put var cloud block block blob equal container dot get blob reference and we're gonna pass the blob name actually we can do, yeah let's utilize the blob name so once we have done that we got the reference here get reference of the blob storage once we have gotten that reference the next step is we need to actually uh, initialize a memory stream so basically the idea is uh, the azure function gets the information from the queues once the information is there it initializes a connection between the azure function and the blob storage once that blob storage uh, once that connection is established uh, what, what it does it's it gets the file name that it's looking for and then it passes it to the uh, storage it asks it asks basically the storage do you have this file that i need 
If it does, what we're going to be doing right now is going to be downloading that file from the storage to the Azure function. We're going to be able to resize it there. And then once we download it, we're going to be basically uploading a new version of that file back to the storage. So that's the process. First, we connect to the storage, check the file exists, download the file to the Azure function, do all of the processing that we need to do, and then uh, we re-upload the resized file to the storage. So once that's done, and basically we got it, we need it, in order for us to download, we need to initialize a memory stream. So it's gonna be var ms equal new memory stream, memory, stre memory stream. And then after that, basically we're gonna put await cloud block block dot download to stream async. And then we're gonna pass the memory stream that we wanna download to. So basically what we did here is we created an empty memory stream. And then once we created the empty memory stream, we utilized the cloud block reference because we got a reference from here. And we told this, okay, since you already have this file for us on the cloud, please download it for us. And basically once that is done, we are able to utilize the memory stream. So once that is done, what we can do here is we need to convert that uh, byte, uh, the memory stream into a uh, byte array in order for us to be able to process it and to be able to resize it. So we're gonna put a byte array and we're gonna call this bytes as simple as that, equal ms dot to array. And this is a very simple way is to convert uh, the memory stream into byte of array. And so now what we're going to be doing is we need to actually analyze the file that we have received in order to check the extension of the file. And based on that, we need to get an encoder in order for us to be utilizing with image char. So before this one here, what we can do is let's create a new encoder message. So it's going to be private static. So we're able to access it. We're going to, it's going to tell I image encoder and then we're gonna call it get encoder and then we're gonna pass the extension and once that is done we're gonna basically put i encoder i image encoder uh, i'm gonna call it encoder equal null and once that is done what we need to do is basically from the extension equal uh, extension dot replace and we're going to be replace removing the dot from the extension because this is within an extension that's what we get okay and then we're going to check uh, if this uh, if this is uh, extension is supported by our encoder so we're going to put var is supported supported equal regular expressions dot is match and we're gonna say the extension we're gonna match with what is it we're gonna support gif uh, this one like this png and we're gonna support gpe and if it's a gpeg or not and then once with that we're gonna put uh, regular expression options dot ignore case Okay, so in case if it's supported, so we're gonna say if it's supported, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna do a switch statement. And basically we're gonna go through the extension. And basically, depending on which type of extension we need. So for example, case, if it's a PNG, we need to return a PNG encoder. So we're gonna put encoder equal a new PNG encoder return case uh, if it's gonna be GIF we're gonna put again encoder equal new GIF encoder return oh sorry not return break still early morning break and then we're gonna have another case for we saw GIF PNG. Now we have GPG, G P. Let's do the GPG encoder equal a new GPEG encoder, and basically it's gonna be the same. 
so case or sudo break and then case gpeg encoder equal new gpeg encoder and we're gonna break and lastly what we're gonna be doing is the default which is not decimal default we're gonna break it okay so that's gonna be it and once we do all of that what we need to do is we need to return the encoder so after the f statement we're gonna say return encoder and that's it so now we can actually get what type of encoder because every every types of image has a different encoder in order for us to utilize so the gif type is deferred from the bmp deferred from the gpg deferred from the png so that's why we need to be very specific of which type of encoder that we need to utilize so once we have done that now let's get the extensions that we will <coughs> excuse me let's get the extension from the file name So we're going to put var extension equal path dot get extension and we're going to pass the file name and I think it's going to be what did we call it here resize info dot file name uh, that should be fine <coughs> and then we're going to get the encoder equal uh, the method's name is gonna think get encoders yes get encoder and we're gonna pass the extension we're gonna start by using an using statement so using var output equal to a new memory stream and basically this memory stream is gonna be uh, responsible for holding uh, uh, our new file once that's done we're going to put another using statement and we're going to be having an image and this is going to be of rgb32 rgba32 and then once let's close this and then we're going to call this an image equal a new image dot load and we're going to pass the downloaded file which is going to be the bytes then once that is done we can continue but let's fix those references image why it's not happy okay so image rgba equal new image image or without the new image load okay so what we're doing here is basically we're creating an image file which is uh, it's part of the uh, image sharp uh, library which basically what we're doing is we're converting the bytes that we got from the downloaded image and we're putting it into that object and basically this object here rgba32 will allow us to resize the image to the specification that we want and once that is done and we have resized we're going to actually put back the resize image inside this output file that we have created which is going to be the memory stream and then we're going to be uploading that memory stream so once that's done let's add a log and we're going to say here log information so we just know what's going on uh, image resize has started so once we did that we're gonna put basically right now image dot mutate and basically image mutate here is gonna allow us to do all of the mutation basically the resizing that we want and we're gonna have a lambda function and basically x dot resize so we're gonna tap into the resizing methods of the mutate and from there on we're gonna put a new resize option we're going to specify what type of option do we want for our resize and basically first things first is we need to actually pass the width and the height that we want to actually set them not pass them so we're going to put size equal new size new size and then we're going to initialize it so we can see here uh, through let's see if we can find see the constructor so we know exactly what we can get uh, it's not any of this let's go all the way up uh, 
Okay, let's just cut it directly. We can see it as we do it. So we can set resize info dot height. And if we take a look at this, we can see the construct. Uh, sorry, this is going to be the width. The width, and we can see here. Uh, if I move the mouse, it will go. But you can see the blue thing on top, which kind of basically takes the width and the height that we want to set. So basically, right now, we're going to put resize info dot height. And once we have done that, the next step is we need to say if it's compressed, uh, compend or not. So we're going to say yes, compend equal true. And basically, if we click on this, we can see the resize option of the image contain against certain non compend means uh, whether it's going to be compressed or not for individual uh, color pixel. It's not something that we need to do, but I feel it makes the image size a bit smaller, so it will make it a bit easier uh, for the upload. And lastly, there's going to be the mode of mode of compression. How are we going to which how how it's going to be the level of compression that we want to actually ac uh, accomplish. And we're going to say resize mode max. So the maximum resize mode that we can actually uh, get away with. That's what we, what we want to do here. So once we have done all of that, we're going to put image dot save. And we're going to save the output of that to the output for uh, output memory stream that we have created. And we're going to be basically passing the encoder because that's uh, what we're going to be doing here. We specified the uh, the properties of the image that we want to export. And once we have specified the properties of the uh, export, we're utilizing another method from image sharp, which is going to call image.save. And that here, we're going to take the property. Uh, where do you want to save it? We're passing the encoder. And basically, from there, it's going to do all of the job to resize that image. So once that is done, I think we can save async. I think it's going to be better. And uh, let's pass an await. And once that is completed, now it's time for us to create a new file. And upload it to a blob storage. So let's do this right now. So we'll, let's create a file name. So I'm going to put far new file, new image name, uh, new file name equal, uh, let's use string interpolation here. We're just going to utilize the same name, uh, but with the resize. So we can put the resize underscore this string interpolation. Uh, we can put uh, Oh, that's uh, so we're gonna put here uh, what is it called resize info dot name okay so once we have created the new file name now it's time to connect our blob storage and start the initiation of the upload process so we're gonna put var blob service client equal new blob blob service client and we're going to be basically the storage connection that we have and then basically we're going to put var a blob container service equal new blob containers uh, where is it blob container client not service So block container client here, we're going to say it. And basically here we're going to pass the, let's see what it's going to take. So I think this one, so it can take the connection string and the block container name. And what else does it take? So connection string and a block. Con so okay, let's rest past the connection string and the block container name. So the connection string it's gonna be uh, store con and the uh, container name is gonna be images. And once that is done. See here. 
actually this we can do it like this yeah let's do it like this and we just pass the images so we don't have to pass the connection twice okay so once we have the client and we have the container service and the client so next step is uh, we're gonna start the copying process so var blob copy equal container dot get block reference And basically we need to make sure that uh, this file does not currently exist on Azure uh, because if it does exist on Azure, uh, we need to replace it. We don't want to do that. So we're just going to pass the new file name that we have. And we're going to say if blob copy or we can see utilize this if await await blob copy dot exist async. So if it doesn't exist, we can actually uh, continue with it. If it does exist, uh, we cannot really upload it. We need to really change the name or basically delete the, the old one and, okay, and upload the new one. And basically here we're going to put log dot log information uh, upload to blobs has started. And basically what we're going to be utilizing here is the blob container client. So we're going to put uh, for upload result equal await blob await blob container client dot uh, it's gonna be upload async where is the upload upload blob async and it's gonna take here the blob name uh, the data okay so let's pass this information so new file name new file name and the output file that we have output output out if i can type output and that should be it and then lastly once everything is there let's uh, log out the result so log dot log information we're just gonna put uh, the dollar sign here and we're gonna put results so we can see and we're just gonna say string interpolation and i'm gonna put upload result dot uh, value dot let's see version id so if it actually uploaded we're going to have a version id and basically once that is done what we're going to be doing is we'll, that that should be it basically let us build this dot not build to make sure that everything is building as it should be build succeeded let's run this funk start Okay, it runs. So uh, let's try it out. So let's go to back to Visual Studio Code. And inside here, what we're going to be doing is oh, still running. Okay, perfect. So let's go back to our web browser. And let's come here and let us try to upload a new picture. Let's choose this one and execute. And now let's go here to uh, our rider. And we can see here we got an issue. Okay. It's very good to see that we have an issue with something actually it's working it means so we can see here that executed azure blob storage content must be okay so let's let's run it in debug mode so let's stop this and let's put a, a break point here and let's run this in debug mode Okay, let's Okay, let's try to initialize this again. So execute Perfect, we received it. So let's go with, uh, in it one by one. So the resize info has been serialized correctly. Let's see. Yes, we got all of the information exactly how we wanted. Now let's continue. 
Are we able to connect to a storage account? Okay. Blob name, okay. So far so good. We got the blob reference, okay, let's continue. And will this work? Yes. Okay, so everything seems to be fine right now. We're getting the GPEG, which is fine. We got the memory stream, created that image. The resize has started. The width is 300 and the height is 300, exactly how we wanted them. The mutation is correct. We are able to save. We created a new file name, perfect. Blob service client, we said it's gonna be images. Let's double check that. So inside here, let's go back here to the storage account. And let's check the containers. Yes, yeah, it's images. And these are all of the images that we have uploaded, which is fine. Uh, let's continue. Okay, does it exist? Doesn't exist. So here we're initializing the upload. And this is where I think we're getting. It says upload result, okay. Let's maybe add a try catch to see what's the issue. Uh, let's continue with the execution. Oh, this is a different one. Okay, so right now all of those pending messages are coming in. Let's remove this breaking point, so let it uh, run in peace. And but let's see here if we have anything which starts with resize. No result. Fresh. No blobs found. Okay. So we're having a bit of problems with the upload. So let's check what's going on here. Let's stop this. Uh, let's keep the console going. Position must be less of the content. Okay. Maybe here what we didn't do is we passed everything back to the... No, we did image. Okay, let's try it without being an async. Because I know sometimes this can be causing an issue. <coughs> so let's stop this and let's run this again. This could be the issue, but let's try it. Let's go back to our web browser. <coughs> We're still getting the same error. Okay, let's stop this. And let's debug this issue. So based on this issue, we, we can see that we have a problem with the position. So one, uh, one potential fix come to mind is this. So we can put output no output dot position equals zero so basically here what we're setting is we're setting the position of the uh, of the memory stream to zero so it will be reset i really hope this could be uh, the fix so let's run this again okay it's running Let's go to our web browser and let's execute this. We received it. Image upload has resulted and we can see the result it has been uploaded successfully. Okay, great. Uh, honestly, I didn't expect this to be uh, as easy as that, but uh, let's double check on the cloud. And let's refresh here to see if there's anything with the resize. And we can see that we have already two images which has been resized and we can see that the images are now way smaller the size has been way smaller because we have automatically implemented this okay perfect so let's do a quick recap so first thing first let maybe let's open back our powerpoint presentation and let's see 
uh, what uh, the process all of it one by one we can go through it and we can explain it and then once that is done we can do another quick recap on the full structure of that code so where is the powerpoint okay so the main thing that we did here is basically let's move me from the side to side okay great so what we did here first we have uploaded the image so we have created a web api and through this web api we have basically uh, created a functionality to upload an image and from there inside this web api what we did is we are we were able to connect first to a uh, blob storage and basically we were able to connect to an um, uh, azure service bus in order for us to send that message there and then basically through that web api we stored that image into the blob storage and we sent the message to the queue once we did that we have created an Azure function and that Azure function basically its main focus is to actually keep checking the queues for any messages and once those queues for messages have came in uh, uh, the Azure function is going to take that message it's going to basically serialize it into a usable object and once it's serialized it it's actually check the value if it's uh, working or not or basically if it's valid or not and once those value of that uh, object has been checked uh, azure function is basically getting the image name is connecting back to the blob downloading that picture once it downloads that picture what it does it's actually uh, resize it it basically first check the extension of the image if see if it's supported or not so for that we need to utilize an encoder once we did all of that we basically resize that image and then connect it back to the blob storage we re-uploaded that image and then basically it so basically in this uh, video today what we did is the a full uh, process of how we can actually uh, decouple major work from a from a basically a monolith application or from like a traditional application into more of like a service oriented structure so what we did here is we took like a, a heavy task which is going to be the image resizing one and we basically created it in its own unique application so we can elevate the pressure from having it run inside our main application so let's say for example we have an e-commerce website and uh, we within this e-commerce website we enable clients to upload their own images and let's say we want to for example once they upload those images we want to create different sizes of those images we want to for example create one for thumbnail one for big product images one for example for preview or for example one uh, a big size so when they hover they can see it in a big size so if you're gonna do this let's say we allow them 10 images and let's say if every for every product once they upload all of that uh, we have to wait for the processing of that 10 images that's gonna take a lot of resources from the main application in order for accomplish to do that so let's say if one client upload 10 products and those for example products have two images for example and we have to go through all of those for those images imagine if we have like thousands of clients and thousands of products happening all simultaneously simultaneously on that main instance it's gonna basically slow down the entire application for this reason it's always good to basically break down uh, these components and having them all in a service oriented way it's not microservice it is a service oriented way because basically we are delegating some of these tasks from the big application into the uh, actual uh, service or in this case the other function in order for us to alleviate some of the work from the main application on and all and uh, delegating into a cloud service was going to make it uh, work way faster and basically with much more less cost and with way better uh, user experience for us and we're utilizing on this way some of the uh, key uh, uh, key key features that Azure provide for us. So uh, in essence, uh, in this video, we have learned about Azure functions. We have learned about service bus, APIs, and imagery sizes, and we have put it all in together into a single solution. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I really hope that you have enjoyed uh, this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. It will really help the channel as well. Uh, please put all of your questions in the comment down below, and uh, I'll try to answer them as soon as I can, or uh, guide you at least to the solution. Thank you very much again and have a great day.